as I'm reading through the Bible, I discovered some things that were shocking to me. For example, that uh, the United States is not mentioned in the Bible. I'm like, what? We're a superpower. How can we? I mean, come on. This was the country I'm going to be the president of. I'm, I'm going to go into West Point. I mean, I was shocked. And I remember going to people and saying, hey, I'm not finding America here. I'm finding like Russia and, and Iran and, and these different countries that sometimes are called different names. But I'm finding everybody else. But where are we at? And then people were like, Mark, you know, you're, you're not a patriot. You don't really care about America. That's, that wasn't true. And I was like, I'm shocked. And then and as I continued to read, I started going through the book of Revelation, got to chapter 13, and I noticed that in the last days, there's going to be this, this global, this globalization is going to take place. And there's going to be this antichrist. In fact, there's three major things in Revelation 13 you discover. The first is, in that center slide, uh, it's just fascinating in our day, the world government summit that just took place in March. 140 countries gathered together, and um, as they gathered together, Becky Anderson, she's the one in the picture, she's a CNN uh, uh, spokesman. Anyways, uh, she introduces, starts the night, and she poses a question. And the question revolves around, we've seen America, you know, leading since World War II, the free world, and so forth. And, and, but is that really the system that we want as we go forward? 140 nations gathered to figure out how to neutralize America from a global superpower to maybe a middle power. Fascinating. Kind of something like you would expect to have to happen when I read Revelation 13. There's another element to Revelation 13. Not only is there a global, this globalization and a, uh, the Antichrist controlling the globe and a global government, but there's also a global economy. And it describes there that, that uh, you can't buy or sell. And I was like taken back. It's like, hold it, the U.S. dollar? The U.S. dollar, I mean, we have the strong, I mean, I was, this was in the 80s. I'm like, we got the strongest currency in the world, you know, and Ronald Reagan's president, and there's no way that could happen. I, I think the Bible might be wrong on this. I just couldn't wrap my mind around the complexities of that. And then you think about World Economic Forum. And you can say this is a conspiracy, but friends, all of the, all of the richest people in the world, the ultra elite are gathering together, and they have eight major objectives by 2030 one of them is that America would be a middle power. In order to do that, there has to be an economic collapse as you and I know it for America. And if you're watching in the news, as inflation takes place and we're printing money, the devaluation, the devaluation of the dollar, on every front, people are saying, uh, you know, we're going to stop using the dollar as the reserve currency of the world. What does that mean? So like the barrel of oil is told to us, and, and how valuable is the barrel of oil? Well, it's always in U.S. dollars. You know, it's $106 a barrel, let's say, in U.S. dollars. Everybody is saying we need to ditch the dollar and come up with something else, and there's this tremendous movement. How many of you remember just uh, on, in middle of March, the president of the United States put an uh, executive order in place to come up with a digital currency, and there's a, there's a timeline in that. I've read all 35 pages. If you can't sleep at night, just print it off. You can do it online. Uh, it's boring as all get out, but there's timelines in it, and there's this big timeline coming in October where uh, legislation has to be on the president's desk regarding a digital currency. And you say, well, I don't think that's all that important. Okay, I'm just telling you it's about control. So a government that's in control of the world, economic control, there's a third element in Revelation 13, and that is a religious control. And it talks about the antichrist being worshipped and the false prophet and everything moving there to worship him. And, you know, you just kind of like wrap your minds around, how can that be? I mean, you know, people, uh, uh, people, I mean, you get, I mean, seriously, you get five pastors together, you're going to get six opinions. <laughs> okay, you were supposed to laugh at that. Lighten up a little bit, y'all. All right. Yeah. So, so seriously, I mean, I mean, think about your spouse or your family members. Do you agree with everybody in your family on stuff? If you do, you got a better family than I do. Anyway.